If you have your Bibles, I would like to pick up on our Bible study this afternoon, um, and that helps the congregation too in continuity of thought for this weekend in our lesson. Um, and I felt led of the Lord, I felt led of the Holy Ghost to continue. And dealing with um, the two trees and the garden. And I was in that subject last night. And uh, to you that were not here, you can pick right up with us and get into that lesson. Because I feel that it's a very vital lesson. And may I make this remark too while I'm on my feet? I think it's very necessary that um, in every service where the ministry has a chance to teach somewhat of the gospel lessons right now to the church for the stability and wisdom of our time for those that are able to concentrate. And I encourage you to bring your Bible. I encourage you to bring a notebook. You can't possibly remember all it said. And um, I encourage you young people to bring a notebook, a Bible, um, because um, it's obvious that there's a little time, there's a little time that we have in time dispensation. You may not see that, but we who study the scriptures do. Uh, you may not understand that, but we who are in leadership of the church do. And there are some things that the ministry must try to say that is with the proper anointing, the word of uh, with the Holy Ghost helping them to the church now uh, because uh, there's a short time. Um, and um, Paul used that expression in 1 Corinthians 7 when he was teaching on the marriage question in the church from Corinth where it was so out of bounds and out of license and uh, the Corinthians were so mixed up and involved and I don't think there's been a more mixed up church than the Corinthian church. Paul never did correct them fully. Uh, we only have two of the letters he wrote. He wrote three letters to the church of Corinth. We only have two. And um, for whatever God allowed it, he didn't allow that third letter to be published or to be in our hands. But the, the Corinthian church was very, very confused. They were divided in leadership. They were divided on the Lord's table. They were divided in marriage. They were divided in idols. Um, and remember, Paul was not there with them constantly. He did not see them sometimes for up to three years. And um, he wrote them letters. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very persuaded that right now that the church, um, unless the remnant part of the church makes an effort, and you'll have to make an effort. Well, what do I have to make an effort over? Your schedule you set to come to church your time you give to get the Bible lessons <laughs> taught by the ministry. Um, it's like uh, the intake of food. You'll have to decide how hungry are you uh, to get your life straightened out, your mindset, your, your, to be sure you are going to heaven, to be sure that you're not just in a game called church uh, on this earth, to be sure that you're established in the faith and to be sure that you are properly conditioned uh, to be a part of the church. You may not be able to fit into the church that uh, the Lord is uh, bringing about now. You may have a, a lot of knowledge like a, a mechanic with a lot of nuts and bolts in a chest uh, that he thinks he can repair an automobile with. Uh, a lot of tools. I have a gift. I have a ministry. Well, if that ministry and that gift is not in divine order, what will you do with it? How will you ever accomplish anything? You'll spend the rest of your life saying, I have a gift. I, I, I know God called me. I know God wants me to do something. 
But what does he want you to do? And why does he want you to do it? And how does he want you to do it? Uh, somebody must instruct you. Somebody must, unless you know it all. Now, if you know it all, nobody can instruct you. If you know it all, nobody can feed you. If, if you already have it all set, and I understand the plan of God from A to Z, and that God has revealed to me and talked to me, and I, I alone know the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth, then you can afford to let no one instruct you. Amen. You can afford uh, to let no one speak to you. You can yes. afford to let no one bring you under subjection to where you can hear the Word of God and be saved by the Word of God. Uh, like the unit that Brother Farmer ministered on here last Sunday, uh, how uh, can I understand when uh, Philip met him uh, outside of Samaria and uh, he was reading the 53rd chapter of Isaiah and he said, understand just what thou readest? Uh, Philip said to the unit, and the unit said, how can I understand? Except some man should guide me. That, would, that man was ready for the truth. Yes, that man was right. ready for a prophet of God to speak yes. to him because he could have said, Philip, I understand it. Leave me alone. I'll read it long enough and I'll get it by myself and you don't need to instruct me. But uh, Philip, uh, the eunuch said, how can I? How can I? Except some man should guide me. And so um, we, we need to we men of God, and I won't be here every Sunday. I won't be here every day. Uh, God, my ministry, and I'm going to obey God and do what God wants me to do. Uh, I, I, there, there's people calling for help. Why do you think the, the, this house was packed over this convention? Because Brother Marlowe has been obedient to God and went out and talked to these people and witness to these people and ministers from all over the earth came here and this church was blessed yes. because they felt a bridge. Yes. You gotta build a bridge yes. across the river. If you have proper fellowship in your life as a child of God, you can't isolate yourself, you can't puff yourself up, you can't get yourself in a little corner and say me and my son John, us four and no more. You're going, he that hath friends, the Bible said, must show himself friendly. And he that hath a Bible lively place in ministry and in the church must obey God and do what God has called him to do. Because otherwise he won't be satisfied. He won't be happy or she won't be. Uh, and they'll, 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 there'll be a source of discontentment all their life trying to sit in a local church and they feel like that God has called them to do something more than that, something more than just receive the word, build the church, keep the church, establish the church, and they've got that turning over in them. Well, they better go do whatever they feel God has called them to do because uh, it's no good being discontented. The Bible said uh, contentment with godliness is of great gain. Uh, the Bible said having food and raiment therewith, uh, and, and that let's, let's apply that spiritually to a local church. Having food in a local church, having raiment, a clothing, a covering, be content. Godliness with contentment is of great gain. But if you can't be content, if you have a, a, a sore that's festering, or you have a, a disgruntled spirit, or you have an attitude that's wrong, or you you uh, you feel like uh, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied, I'm not content. You'll never be able, as a child of God, to sit in that church and having food and raiment, be content. You'll always be looking for something over the fence. You'll be wanting to get out of the fence. Uh, you, and, and you can't bless that local church. Uh, you know who blesses a local church? Burden bears. Is it cars? Uh, that bow their shoulders to bear. And, and because, see, is it car was a tribe, and when you read the 49th chapter of Genesis, 
uh, that's a picture of spirits in the earth. Amen. Every one of those sons represented a spirit. And um, some of those spirits were not right. Reuben was not right. That's no. Jacob said, Reuben, you're as unstable as water. How unstable is water? You can pour anything. You can make it uh, go into a quart, a pint. You can put it in a cup. You can put it in a glass. Water is as unstable yes, as there can be. Uh, it'll fit anything, any container. Uh, uh, he said to Reuben in the 49th chapter of Genesis, he said, but Reuben, you're as unstable. Now, this is a father to a son. And I think it's time that fathers spoke more firmly and more plainly uh, if they expect people uh, to move into the place where they should be. Amen. And if a father can't speak plainly, and if he can't speak openly, and he has to go around the corner and whisper, and you don't know to half what he's saying, and you're not sure of what he's saying, uh, if you don't understand me after this lesson, ask me. And I'll, I'll be very plain with you. Uh, because I don't believe that fathers they should be brutal or brawlers or hard, but I believe they should be firm on the Word of God. I believe we should all be on the Word of God. I believe the foundation of any church should be the Word of God. I believe the foundation of your ministry should be the Word of God. I believe the foundation of the church to withstand the evil day should be the Word of God. Thus saith the Word of God. Not what I say, not what you say, but thus saith the word of God. Uh, that, that should be the foundation. And, um, and, and he said, Reuben, here's that now. And then he turned to Dan. And, and Dan didn't escape the fathers uh, either. He said, Dan, you're a serpent. Uh, you're an adder in the path. You're a serpent by the way. And he said, you bite the horse's heel and cause the rider to fall backwards. Uh, did you know that Judas came from the tribe of Dan, and that Judas bit Christ uh, and bit the early church and caused Christ, the writer, uh, to fall backward into the grave, uh, sold him for 30 uh, pieces of silver. That prophecy was fulfilled. Um, and, and, he, and he looked at um, as, um, another one of them. He said, you're like Heinz feet. Uh, in other words, you're leaping here, leaping there. Uh, and he just kept on going down to uh, then to Simeon and Levi, another two of the boys. He said, "Why well, your instruments are cruelty. That's what you are." He said, "You're you're you're cruel. You follow the lineage of Simeon and Levi, and you'll see that was fulfilled." See, so uh, we we as men of God and women of God and assemblies right now, we must find the word temperance, because if the body of Christ, if the remnant church does not find the word of God and get on it and work in it and work through it and do exactly what it says, Amen. we'll never build these local churches uh, back to the glory that they were in when the prophet William Souders came out and took his stand and from that purity of that man's calling and that man's wisdom, uh, the body of Christ was blessed. And over America, yeah. uh, the remnant church sprung up yeah. uh, from 1914 when he began to preach this prophet of God. Uh, now, we've watched a lot of them be torn down. We've watched a lot, of, a lot of them modified. And because ministry, and if ministry doesn't know where they're going, the people can't know where they're going. Uh, if the blind, Jesus said, but if the blind lead the blind, where do they go? Where do they go? They go into the ditch. Did you know if a blind preacher leads a blind church, that church is going to wind up in the ditch. The ditch could be, uh, uh, could be modernism coming in. Uh, the ditch could be um, uh, allowing the world to take over the church. The ditch could be false doctrine. Uh, the ditch uh, uh, could be uh, uh, standards let down to where there's no one knows what the church lives by. Um, and that could be leadership in the church, uh, having such standards that 
They confuse the rest of the church. Uh, uh, they, they, they're blind, so the rest of the church goes blind because the leadership is blind. Uh, uh, but it could be uh, that that church loses its balance and it becomes uh, overbalanced and, and it loses temperance and uh, it demands of people things that the scripture doesn't demand. Did you know I can demand of Christians things that the scripture doesn't demand? Where, uh, where does that come from? It comes from my self-righteousness. And did you know you can demand of people around you things that the scripture doesn't demand? And you can be pride yourself that you're holy, that you're righteous, uh, when the scripture doesn't demand that. Uh, but you demand it. It's your spirit. Uh, then you can be so loose in your spirit that you can let people around you uh, uh, be so loose uh, that they'll feel like it's all right with you, so it's all right with me. Uh, it's all right with them, it's all right with me. Uh, so you can go either way. But the word, uh, why, why does a, a, a clock swing? Why does a pendulum in a clock swing back and forth like this in the old master clocks, the old grandfather clocks? Why was that? Uh, it was because that was keeping the balance of time. Yes. It had to go to the right. It had to come back to the left yes. because it was keeping the balance of time. Uh, temperance and moderation. Paul said, let your moderation be known to all men. Uh, he said, add to your faith virtue and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance. Uh, uh, see, uh, temperance. Uh, I want to be a balanced man. I, I don't want to establish my righteousness. Where is that scripture in Romans? Let me get that real quick. Romans, uh, Romans 10, isn't it? Uh, let me get that real, real quick here. Uh, I think I can pick it up uh, uh, real quick. No, no, it's Romans. Yes, it's Romans 10. Uh, brethren, verse 1. Uh, Romans 10. Uh, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear the record that they have a zeal of God. A lot of people have zeal. I, I've met uh, people with zeal to run through a uh, troop and leap over a wall. Yeah. I had a man here counseling him last night after the service, and he'd just come in around the church. First thing he wanted me to do was to explain to him uh, how he could do what he needed to do in the ministry and what he needed to do in the uh, leadership of the church. Here's a man that needs to be taught, yeah. needs to come in and sit down, needs to open his heart up, but he's wanting me to put him in the ministry right away. Yeah. He's wanting me to put him in a position of leadership right away. Why, would, would I take, would I do that? No, would, I, would I be so foolish as to place a leader uh, in, in leadership mm -hmm. uh, that can't lead, that isn't properly equipped, that doesn't have the standards, the knowledge, the understanding? Uh, would, I be, uh, would I do that? Would I, would I be so foolish as to uh, uh, this assembly all these years not know the men that are in leadership, the men that I can trust, the men that I know will be faithful and will be capable. Uh, uh, would I be foolish of that? Uh, no, because uh, I, I'm 53 years of life, 53 years of my wife and I. Our wife is here. We've grown old here. Sister Marlon and I have grown old here. Our youth is gone. Our years are gone. And we gave it to this church. Amen. We gave it to this church. Amen, brother. We gave it. Yes. We just gave it. Yes. Now it's gone. Amen. Now it's gone. Amen. You think I would be so foolish as to not know around me uh, those that are capable of leadership, those that have uh, moderation, those that have standards, those that have uh, ability not to go so far this way, not that way, they have trained themselves, they can keep their spirit, they can watch their spirit, they can not fly off the handle, they not can get depressed to where, oh, I don't want to do anything, I'm done, and the church is done, and, and uh, uh, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm tired, I want to quit. Uh, no, I, I, no, I wouldn't be that foolish. 
because, see, everybody can have zeal. Uh, zeal is a desire to do something. I have a desire to be president today, zeal. I, I wish I was president of the United States. I really do. I, I think I could do a better job. I think I could. Uh, give, give me a week up there in the White House and I'll make some kind of wave. I'll make some kind of ripple. I'll tell you that. I, I'd turn around something if it wasn't, uh, but in, I'd start in the White House and cut out some of that foolishness. You know, I'd do something. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I wouldn't leave it as it is uh, right now. Uh, but see, I've got that zeal. But that's not according to knowledge because I'm not going to be president of the United States. Uh, Tomlinson, uh, the head of the Church of God, a uh, prophecy thought he was yes. a few years ago, yes. and he ran for president of the United States. He got a few thousand votes, that's all. Uh, he could never be the president. They're not going to elect a preacher to be a president of an immoral nation. Do you think the politics of America is going to let a God-fearing man, consecrated, full of the Holy Ghost, uh, go up there and be president? No, they're going to fight him uh, from the local precinct on up. Uh, they're not going to let him do it. Let me tell you something right now. But I've got a zeal. And Paul said, I bear them record that they have a zeal. They have a zeal. The priesthood had a zeal. The Levites had a zeal. But they didn't have knowledge. They didn't know what time it was. They even missed the coming of the Messiah. They did not even know the signs of the prophets. They couldn't even understand Malachi and Zephaniah and Hosea and Zechariah. They were telling them when Jesus was coming. They were telling him how he would be. They described him how he was. Yes. They described John the Baptist. Yes. Uh, but, but they couldn't read it. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't see. Uh, so they had a zeal, but not according uh, to knowledge. And he said, but they, being ignorant of God's righteousness. I don't want to be ignorant of God's righteousness. There is a righteousness of God that must be upheld in a local church. It must be upheld in the body of Christ. Yes. Not your righteousness, not their righteousness, no, not my righteousness, no, but the righteousness that is of God. Amen. How right is God? Oh, He's God. right all the time. Amen. How right is my God? He's right all the time. It must be upheld in a local church. The saints must hear a message. Uh, uh, they must uh, understand how to worship, and uh, they must be taught how to worship. Uh, I don't want this church to bring your cell phones in here and begin worship. Uh, uh, that camera is picking up people on cell phones. Uh, they're back of me. They're over here. They're out here. Uh, and that camera is picking that up and showing that all over the world uh, that people are texting, talking on those phones back and forth to one another from the platform down to the plat out here up. I want that eliminated Amen. in this Amen. assembly. I want that eliminated. Amen. Put your phone on vibration. Uh, uh, eliminate it. Uh, uh, I want comic books. I want uh, novels. I, I want worldly material. Don't bring it to church with you. Don't sit in that seat and read it uh, while uh, you know, a uh, man of God is delivering a message. Uh, uh, don't don't sit there and draw cartoons and draw pictures and and uh, write notes. And that's not worship. That isn't worship. We've come here to worship the Lord. We've come here to worship the Lord. We've come here to worship Him. Amen. Uh, one of you elders, when we're when Sister Marlowe was singing. Don't let me stand up here every time. Rise up here and get into worship and lead this church in worship. Praise the name of the Lord. How do you do that? You don't know how to do that after all these years. You mean after all these years you don't know how to lead people in worship? You lead people with your arms uplifted. You lead the church with praise the Lord. You lead the church with hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Their leaders have to be in the church. Lead us in worship. Lead us in praise. Lead us in song. You saints, manifest the Holy Ghost. You know what you're doing when you're manifesting the Holy Ghost?
trembling, shaking, lifting your hands. That's right. You're leading the church in worship. Yes. You're worship leaders. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. We get ten over here and ten over here and five over here. First thing you know, all this carnal stuff will fade out of the church. All this carnal stuff will leave the church because there'll be five people with their hands uplifted, praising the Lord. There'll be five men over here praising the Lord. Young people will be praising the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And he'll be saying hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. It'll spread like wildfire. It'll come in. Water will be flowing. The church will take a drink. And the Holy Ghost will come in. And the dew will fall. The dew will fall. As it did in Israel. You know what happens after the dew falls? Then a man of God will rise up. And he'll have manna. Praise the name of the Lord. And he'll feed the people. But the man of God's got to get up in a carnal church with a carnal mind, with a carnal atmosphere, and five over here doing this, and five over here doing that, and ten back here doing that, and uh, uh, this one getting up, and don't ever get on your feet when a man of God is delivering a message. Uh, you don't have to go, and you know you don't have to go, but you just got bored, tired, restless, and you get up and walk back here to this restroom, or walk back here to this restroom, stay on your chair. Uh, don't don't distract. Uh, if you have to go, all right, you have to go. Uh, uh, but uh, if you don't, uh, then then hold yourself, contain yourself, control yourself. Uh, because uh, if the word of God is coming forth, somebody gets right up in the middle of it, walks out of the door, walks out uh, over here, it distracts. It distracts. I don't want anything distracting. Now I don't have to have, I know you have to go, I know some are ill, I know some are sick, I know some have problems, health problems, I'm not talking about that, don't be so thin still, uh, let me preach the gospel here, don't be so thin still, praise the name of the Lord, don't be so thin still, let me preach the gospel, can preachers, I want to ask you a question church, in Brayden, can there be a place uh, where a man of God stands up and preaches the word of God again? Can there be a place uh, where we teach the whole gospel, nothing but the gospel, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Uh, is there a place, uh, is there a place consecrated, is there an altar? Praise the name of the Lord. I believe there is. I believe there is, and I believe Braden is a place. I love the saints. Yes. I love this church. Uh, I would not be brutal. I would not offend you. I would not come at you with harshness. But I do believe that there are lessons that must be taught in the Word of God. And uh, we must come back in with worship. We must come in to uh, uh, move our services into worship. And then uh, we must receive the Word of God, and we must be temperate and moderate, and then we must be steadfast and unmovable. Now, let me touch again the trees. Uh, I was in that last night. I want to get back in that for a few minutes. And if I, this is a teaching service, and if there's something I say uh, that you don't understand as elders around me or saints, you can either write a note, slip up your hand, and I'm always teach on an afternoon like this subject to um, hearing those around me. Uh, I don't encourage rambling. I don't encourage uh, someone wanting to preach instead of me. God has me up here to preach right now. And, and, uh, uh, but if there's a question to be asked or a comment, uh, why then yes, uh, engage in it. And, and let's clarify the, the word. But here in uh, Genesis 2, let me go right back where I was last night. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou uh, eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I will make a help me for him. Then he created the woman. Now, I said last night, I don't know if you got that lesson fully or not, that's why I'm re reiterating it. Um, this is a metaphor of the scriptures. And um, a metaphor is a picture. 
The Bible is a factual book, but it is a book of parables, metaphors, and similes. And someone said, but Brother Marla, you don't believe that was a natural tree. Uh, I certainly do. I believe there were natural trees in the garden. I believe that those trees uh, consisted of metaphor pictures. Uh, the tree of life, uh, was there a tree with fruit on it that if Adam had eaten of it, he would have lived and never died? Possibly so, possibly so. Uh, but he nullified that anyway yes. when he ate of the forbidden tree. For, of the forbidden tree. However, I think the metaphor <coughs> or the picture of the tree of life consistently from Genesis into Revelation 22 is Christ. And then in Revelation 22, he shows 12 trees, which are the 12 apostles that he established as trees of life in a new covenant on either side of the river. But in the garden, there was singular tree of life. I believe that was Christ. Amen. However you put it, wherever you see, then a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Was there a tree that could have brought um, a poison in it? If there was, God then contradicted himself because he said he looked at everything that he had made and said that it was good. If there was a natural fruit tree that could have had poison in it or death in it, then God contradicted his own word because he said he looked at everything he had made and said it was good. It was good. So I'm just saying that as a thought. I'm not dogmatic. In anything I teach, I'm open for counsel and for scriptures. Uh, but uh, then, and then I'm showing you, though, uh, a tree is a seed-bearing uh, creation. Now look at Genesis 3 and 22. This is in Genesis 2, but look at 3, or 315, rather. Look at Genesis 315. Uh, now he created these two trees. I'm saying Christ was one, the tree of life. I'm saying the tree of the knowledge, of the knowledge, that's the key of good and evil, was Adam and Eve. Amen. And that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You say, but they were not evil. No, they were not evil till they committed evil. They were not sinful till they committed sin. See? Uh, uh, God created light, he created darkness, he created good, he created evil uh, in the depository of man, in the depository of man. Uh, that, that's why the scripture said, for by one man, Romans 5 and 12, for by one man sin entered into the world. How could sin enter into the world uh, if, if there had not been a depository of evil in that creation that he made of man. Uh, so the scripture said uh, that uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, picture we have, uh, see, uh, the reason I know that was not, an, or I believe, that that was not a natural tree, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good evil, is because did you ever see an oak with knowledge? Did you ever, uh, or evil? Did you ever see a pine? a cypress, a fir, uh, uh, what trees of creation uh, have knowledge of good and of evil? But here is a tree that does. Here is a tree that does. This tree has a knowledge of good and of evil. And we're called trees in the scripture. The trees of the field clap their hands. Another metaphor in the scripture. I uh, quoted um, uh, I used um, uh, Psalms 1 last night. He shall be like a tree, uh, the man that doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, uh, that it doesn't take the counsel of the ungodly. He shall be like a tree planted by, he shall be as a tree planted by the river. So uh, this um, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it bore seed. So did the tree of life, Christ. So did this tree. Now look at Genesis 3, 15, and the scripture said, and I will put, well, let's use verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, who had become the opposer 
of God, uh, who was the tempter of, of, of um, Eve, then Adam, as she tempted Adam, uh, the, uh, and, and the serpent now is the opposer of God, uh, opposer of the righteousness of God. See, evil now has entered the earth. Evil is in the earth. Man is no longer pristine, pure. Man is no longer without reproach. In the 22nd verse. And the scripture said, and, and uh, verse 15, 14 rather, uh, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all uh, cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou dost shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, he's using metaphors and pictures throughout this 14th verse. The serpent, we know, is upon his belly. Uh, the belly is the dirtiest part and the lowest part of mankind. Your belly contains garbage, contains trash items that we store in it. Uh, food items that become uh, uh, vile have to be eliminated from the body. Uh, uh, the, the belly, uh, that's why Paul said, uh, which church did he say that to? Meats for the belly and belly for the meat. And God shall destroy both in his Corinthian church, wasn't it? And he was talking about fornication. He was dealing with the lowest sin of man that's created upon his belly. Fornication. Fornication. See, fornication is absolutely a sexual sin that God will judge you for and me for, and uh, uh, it's created, it, it's carried out upon the belly. Uh, and he said, but meats for the belly. That is, the, that which you're eating. Uh, he was dealing with fornication. Uh, read that First Corinthians there. And you'll see he's dealing, the subject he's dealing with is fornication. Meats for the belly and the belly for meat. That is the lowest part of man, the fallen part of man, is committing that. God uh, shall destroy both it, what, it, uh, and them. He'll destroy fornication, and he'll destroy them that participate in it. Uh, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, either spiritually or naturally. That's why I'll have no part right now with some elements of the body of Christ that I believe is committing spiritual fornication with Christ not being their head. I believe if Christ is not the husband of the church, if Christ is not the husband of this church, and I, as a man, would be having intimate relations with you instead of Christ uh, giving you the word of God, instead of Christ being your head, instead of Christ being over you, uh, then there would be spiritual fornication. If, the, if this would be a religious organization where man was ruling it, by the hand of man, by the rulership of man, by the laws of man, then I believe this church would be in spiritual fornication. I believe a woman is in spiritual fornication. A man is in spiritual, that is natural, uh, uh, I said the church spiritual, man, woman, the natural, if they are having relationship outside of a lawful husband or a lawful wife, uh, then that is fornication or adultery. Uh, and the scripture said uh, that God will destroy both it and them. He'll do it spiritually. He'll do it naturally. God is against it spiritually. God is against it naturally. And, and so uh, here he said, now upon thy belly thou shalt go, and he said, dust, that's another metaphor. From dust thou art, under dust thou shalt return. What am I but dust? Earth. What are you but dust? Yes, earth. But earth. From the dust I came, to the dust I'll go. Uh, I will return. <coughs> uh, uh, and, and see, uh, so the scripture says uh, that, that uh, that's a metaphor uh, uh, showing, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. See, the serpent nature in me uh, that, that is, is diabolical and of the devil, that can be, uh, the carnal nature can do nothing but eat dust. 
And because that's what the serpent does, uh, that God used as a metaphor or a picture upon thy belly, thou shalt go. Then, then, uh, and, and then verse 15 uh, is a prophecy, the first prophecy in the Old Testament. This is the first prophetic utterance in the Old Testament. And it said, and I will put enmity. What is enmity? It's division, separation. And I will put enmity or division between thee and the woman. Now, what does he say? The serpent's seed now and the woman's seed. The woman being the church that he's trying to save, the remnant that he's trying to save, and the serpent seed that he must destroy. And he said, I'll put division between them. That's why the church can never compromise and get too close to the world. That's why the world cannot take over the church. That's why there must be a line drawn in the church yes. by deed, conduct, <laughs> word, speech, mannerism, spirit, as to how we conduct ourselves, yes. whether we are partakers of the world Amen. or whether we are partakers of Christ, because that determines our seed. Yes. That determines our seed. Yes. See, you say, is that person of the devil? They are, if, they, if their seed is of the devil. 